Well, hello everyone. It's lovely to be here again. And uh, my name's Serena and I'm from Grace Christian Fellowship. So uh, I've got uh, a message from you, uh, trusting it's what the Lord has given me for you today. And this message is called Walking on the Waves. And it's taken from Matthew 14, verse 22 to 32. So um, in this passage, Jesus has just fed 5,000 people uh, with five loaves and two fish. And he sends the disciples off in a boat and he goes up a mountain to pray. Okay, so I'm going to start reading at verse 22 from Matthew 14. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and, beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Hallelujah. Famous story. Everybody knows about Peter walking on the water towards Jesus. And an amazing miracle. Fantastic. Peter, in the middle of a stormy sea at night, sees Jesus coming towards him, gets out of the boat at the Lord's command, and walks towards him on the water. Amazing. And then we know what happens. He sees the waves and he gets afraid and he begins to sink. But of course, Jesus is there to rescue him. So we have Peter walking on the waves. Amazing. We always hear the story about Jesus walking on the water, but Peter did too, uh, which is quite incredible. It's an amazing miracle, isn't it? But you know, we can do this in our storms every day. We can walk on the waves of the storms. We don't have to be sinking down underneath them. Have you ever found yourself walking on stormy waves and uh, a little bit nervous, a difficult situation, and you're trying to get through it, trying to trust God, believe him, believing the scriptures, praying? That's all pretty much the same as walking on the waves, isn't it? Well, what is walking on the waves like? Well, it's an up and down experience, isn't it? Definitely an up and down experience. Uh, even if you go on a boat and the water gets a little rough, the boat starts going up and down. Is that a pleasant experience? Well, if you're a sailor, you might like it, but if you're a normal person, a land lover, it's probably not a very pleasant experience, is it, to be going up and down in a boat? Not really. It might be fun if you're a kid, uh, but generally it's not particularly present, pleasant. We all start sort of going a bit green and, you know, feeling a bit queasy. It's uncomfortable being thrown about, isn't it? And it's a bit frightening too, thinking, are we going to sink? Is the boat going to go down? Am I going to be safe? Am I going to get wet here? You know, years ago, some friends bought me a birthday present and they didn't just buy me something, you know, a physical present. Uh, they bought me something called a red letter experience. I don't know if any of you have heard of those. And um, they paid for me, basically, to go on an activity. So they paid a certain sum of money to a company. And then I could choose, I could go online and choose what activity I wanted to take part in. And there's lots of different things. that so You could choose a spa day, or you can have a meal out on a Thames River boat. Uh, you know, depending on what you pay, there are different 
um, different amounts of money that you can pay. You can pay a lot and you know drive a Ferrari or something, or just pay a little bit. Um, you can go and drive a giant truck. Anyone ever fancy going and driving a giant truck and sort of trying to reverse it? Well, I might not do the reversing bit. I'd drive forward, wouldn't mind that. Um, so me at the time, this was quite a few years ago, being ready for a, net, for a venture, I chose a trip in a powerboat. Now, I had visions of speeding along the smooth surface of the water, you know, wind in your hair, lovely sunny day, enjoying it. I've done quite a few, you know, a few adventurous things. I've done rock climbing and whitewater rafting and scuba diving. So I thought, this sounds good. It's a little bit exciting, but not, not too challenging, not too energetic. So I got there and um, I went into where you signed in and sort of signed my name. And, and the, the guy who was going to drive the boat kind of looked at me and went, are you, are you coming? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm coming. And he's like, oh, oh, okay, all right. And sort of, you know, carried on. And, and these other people came in, these sort of rather chunky, hefty blokes sort of came in and then there was me. And um, anyway, we got into this boat and the reality was that the water was incredibly choppy. And, um, oh, it went up and down and up and down fast, honestly. And it was, it, you sort of, it, you took off on a wave and then you went down and dropped vertically and hit the water again. And then you took off on another wave and then you dropped. And, uh, and some of us were standing at the front. I was standing and there were, so that's, you stood at the front of this boat and then there were a couple of seats at the back. And I don't know if you've ever been skiing, but you have to brace your knees to, to sort of, you know, compensate for the shock of the, when the skis hit the snow. Well, I had to do this in the water and I was sort of bracing myself against the side of the boat and you could even have a, have a ghost driving it. And so I sort of thought, yeah, well, I'll, I'm up for it, anything. I'm here now, I might as well have a go. Well, we hit one enormous wave, dropped and hit the water and my knees collapsed and I sort of fell onto the bottom of the boat and holding onto the steering wheel like this. So, well, it was quite challenging. And about, after about, I don't know, 20 minutes, even the tough guys in the back were looking pretty green. And the instructor or the driver sort of looked at me and said, have you had enough? You want to go back? And I was like, yeah, I think, I think we'll go in now. And he turned to the other guys and said, you, is that all right? Yeah, yeah, it's all right. We'll, we'll go back now. We don't mind. <laughs> all feeling a bit grim. It was a venture. It was an adventure. It, had it high, definitely had its highs and lows. Was it pleasant? Not particularly, I have to say. Uh, looking at the list now, I would definitely go for the spa day rather than, you know, the trip on the powerboat. It was memorable. It was funny. Uh, it had its moments, but I was, I was pretty glad to get off. So waves, I have discovered, are not much fun. Not really. It's, as we said, it's a very up and down experience. Waves are quite impressive to look at, aren't they? I remember going to Brighton, you know, and go, being on Brighton Seafront. It must have been Christmas, I think. We'd gone down to see some relatives. And the waves were coming over the promenade, soaking everybody. Huge waves. Great fun to look at, but not much fun if you're out in the middle of them. Not, not fun at all. In, uh, in the passage that we read, verse 24 said... The disciples in the boat, the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. I know what that's like now. I know the buffeting of the waves and uh, it wasn't much fun. The New Living Translation says the disciples were in trouble far away from land, fighting heavy waves and the boat was being beaten by the waves battered by the waves, another version says. Another version says it was being thrown around by the waves um, or taking a beating from the waves. And another version said it was distressed by the waves. So the boat and their, you know, thereby the disciples in it were having a rough time. It wasn't a pleasant experience. And you know what? In our lives, we can be distressed by the waves that come upon us, can't we? They're not much fun when we're in the middle of a storm, an emotional storm, a family storm, a financial storm, whatever it is. It's not fun, is it? Anybody willingly go through another challenge or trial? I don't think I would, no. But, you know, I've often wondered what it was like seeing Jesus walking on the water towards the boat. 
How did Jesus cope with the waves? Now, I often wonder, was he kind of walking up and then sliding down the waves? Was he clambering up another one? You know, probably quite enjoying himself because he's the Lord and he's not worried. Sliding down another one. Was that what it was like? Or did he just kind of serenely walk through them with the waves, you know, passing, parting for him? I like to imagine that he was clambering up and down and then sliding down another one. We know he wasn't panicking because he's the Lord of creation. And he could have stilled those waves with just a word. With the minute he put his foot on the water, he could have stilled the waves. But he didn't do that. He didn't still the waves. He allowed it to be stormy. He was up a mountain. He saw the disciples in trouble in the middle of the lake. He could have spoken to the winds and said, stop. You know, my disciples are struggling here. Let's calm the water. No, he doesn't do that. He lets the storm continue. He lets the waves continue. He allows the disciples to be distressed by the waves, but he does go to them, go to them in the storm. Do you know what? I think he knew that the disciples were going to learn more of a lesson about himself if it was stormy with rough waves. They wouldn't have needed to trust him. Peter probably wouldn't have even have said, let me get out the boat. He might have done if the sea was all calm and still. The disciples learnt more of a lesson because the Lord allowed it to be stormy. He knew they would see more of his power, his glory, his ability, his faithfulness to save them than if he'd just calmed the sea and had a nice smooth walk um, towards them for comfort or ease. So anyway, this is where Peter found himself in the middle of a rough sea, far from land, in the dark, battered by waves. When he makes this impetuous decision, we know Peter was a pretty impetuous person. I'll do it, Lord. I'll stand up for you, Lord. And he says, let me come to you, Lord. I wonder if he regretted it a few steps later. He might have done. Anyway, Jesus says to him, okay, come, no problem. Do you know what? I think Peter thought he could do it. That's Peter, isn't it? I can do it. I'm all right. I can, I can, you know, I'll stand up for the Lord. I can do this. But Peter is full of self-confidence until he actually sees his own weakness and realises that he can't do anything himself without the Lord's help. And I think that's what he must have realised when he walked on the water for a while thinking, this is great. And then suddenly the fears overtake him. He sees his own weakness, he begins to sink, and then he needs the Lord's help. He realises that his own strength will fail him, and he will sink and fall unless he cries out to the Lord, and the Lord helps him, which is what the Lord does. You know, as we said earlier, waves are distressing, because it's an up and down experience. You know, when we're going through a trial or a challenge, we can be up one minute. I'm believing this scripture. I'm going to hold on to this scripture. And then the fears overwhelm us and we're down in the depths again. And then we struggle up. No, no, I'm going to stand in faith. And then we get a bit scared and we go down again. We don't really want to be in a situation like that, do we? We would much rather have a nice, calm stroll rather than having to battle with the waves. As human beings, we like stability, peace calmness, all of those things. So where do waves come from? Well, why are they there? Well, obviously they're created by the storm, aren't they? They appear when there's a storm. It's not a beautiful, calm, lovely day and there's huge waves on the sea. It comes with the storm, with the winds. When there's a storm in our lives, that's when we find ourselves on the waves, like Peter, walking on the waves. What was Peter trying to do? Why did he get out the boat? Why didn't he just stay in the boat? It would have been easier and safer. Well, I think he was trying to get closer to Jesus. And if any one of us is on that journey of trying to get closer to Jesus, we're going to find ourselves walking on waves like Peter did. 
because that's what happens when you want to follow the Lord. There are going to be storms, there are going to be waves. It's like as Christians, because we're the Lord's disciples and we're just trying to get closer to him, the storms arise in our lives. We don't know why this storm arose on the Sea of Galilee. Um, they were quite common there, I believe, partly because of the weather conditions. Apparently, here's a bit of information for you, the Sea of Galilee lies 680 feet below sea level. It's quite low. But it's surrounded by hills which have cool, dry air. Um, but around the sea, the climate is subtropic, semi-tropical. So all the difference between the cool air on the mountains and the subtropical uh, just around the sea causes large differences in temperatures. And that's what causes the storms. They can arise very quickly and without warning. And so a, little, a small boat out in the middle of the lake can be in an immediate danger very quickly. So maybe this storm arose in this passage just because there was a weather condition. But you know what? It might also have been that maybe the devil saw a wonderful opportunity to destroy the Lord's disciples while he was absent from them and up a mountain. Maybe he thought, I know what I'll do. I'll stir up a storm. I'll get rid of them. Um, we don't know why the storms of life appear, whether it's just life or whether the enemy is having a bit of a go at us because we are trying to get closer to Jesus. It could be either. It doesn't matter really. Job didn't know what caused all of his problems. He didn't know it was the devil that had gone to talk to God and that that was the direct result of their conversation or the troubles that came upon him. It doesn't really matter because whatever it is, whether it's just life or whether it's the enemy, the Lord is there and he's in control. He's in charge of our lives and he's allowed the storm and the waves so that we can learn more about him. He allows them. He allows it to bring us closer to him. And unfortunately, that's life, isn't it? It's an up and down experience. I once heard a Christian minister say, life has its ups and downs, which we all know. And they went on to say, life is like... Um, when you're connected to a heart monitor. And you know on a heart monitor, you get that little signal that goes beep, 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 up and down, doesn't it? And as long as it's doing that, as long as it's, you know, the little green line is going beep, 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 then it's okay, you're alive. So being alive is a series of up and downs. That's what it means. As long as, as soon as that line goes flat, then you're in trouble because then you're dead. You know, so life is gonna be up and down. And it's only going to be completely smooth, you know, when, we, when we're dead, when we get to glory. It's like walking on waves. Life is an up and down experience, often unpleasant. But the good news is that Jesus is always there to reach out to us and rescue us. He never leaves us. Verse 30 and 31 said, When Peter saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. 31, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? You know, it wasn't really the waves that made Peter sink. It was his fear and doubt about the waves. And that means that in our life, we can walk on those waves. Because if we're trusting the Lord, it's not a problem. We don't need to sink. But even so, Jesus is always there to raise us up close enough to grab him. It doesn't say Jesus had to do a half marathon to get close enough to the, to the boat to get hold of Peter. He was right next to him. He reached out his hand. And that's what we need to remember. Even if there are storms, even if we end up walking on waves because we want to follow Jesus, even if we doubt and get afraid, the Lord is always nearby to hold us up in our trials and difficulties. The scripture says he never leaves us or forsakes us. He's always nearby. It also says he is closer than a brother. Isn't that wonderful? So even in the midst of a storm, Jesus says, come, come closer. That's what he said to Peter. In times of anxiety or fear, he says, come, come closer. So don't be afraid of the storms of life. Don't be distressed by the waves like the disciples were. Often the Lord allows those storms so we can see more of his power. 
what we can glorify him. Psalm 27 says, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Sometimes I like to put in what shall I fear? Because it's often a situation that worries us, isn't it? The Lord is the strength of my life, of what shall I be afraid? So praise the Lord, let's trust his faithfulness and power and let's walk on those waves with confidence because he's there with us. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.